Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. So how was your weekend? Mine was pretty interesting. Friday I went to a wonderful wedding and then Saturday and Sunday I perceived to get thousands of emails and tons of comments, many of which were very negative. So I want to apologize to anybody I offended with Friday's episode. Obviously, we were in a very cheerful mood with Brandon's wedding, and we wanted to put something out because I was really not even supposed to be here. If you noticed, I was in street clothes when I taped the episode. We want to do something a little fun. You know, the community of Wine Library TV has been so great. You guys have been so wonderful to me, so I kind of thought I would do something fun, you know, kind of give a giggle. Well, that backfired quite a bit, and I received enormous amounts of emails of people that were angry with me. Other than that, I got received tons of emails from wineries that were angry with me. So go figure. And a couple distributors. So over the weekend, I definitely had a very interesting Wine Library TV experience. Uh, negative feedback from customers, negative feedback from wineries and distributors. Now, the wineries and distributors, I know I'm going to get. That's going to happen. And the viewers, I know I'm going to get. It's going to happen too. So you got to break out of the mold and move on. And so today we're going to do that. And we're going to do that with a very serious wine episode, the German Riesling episode. A lot of people have been asking for that. Um, Obviously, uh, there's a lot to learn about German wines. There's so many different things going on. I'm going to try to specifically be in one area, which is the ripeness level, which is really the key to the structure of most German wines and really key to understanding German wines. Um, the ripeness scale starts with the wines from the QMP, the quality you know, uh, QMP label, and I'll show you that on the label. There's really three levels of German wines. The first level really doesn't even make it to the U.S., the DTW. And then there's the QBA, which a lot of people know, which is basically translate to the quality from a distinct area. And then the QMP level, which is wines that basically, tra that basically translates to wines of a high quality, wines of a quality. So real, real high quality. So the wines of that area, while it wines of distinction, that's what it is. Um, those wines have a scale. And that scale starts with Cabinet, then Spatlace, then Auschlace then Baranauschlis, then uh, Baranauschlis, then Trocken Baranauschlis, and then the final step is the ice wine. So there's six levels. Very serious wines, all of them, even the cabinet. And really, it's the quality of the ripeness of the fruit. Really, the, uh, the, the level of fruit that it brings to the table. It's not really a sweetness guide. It's just really the, the, the overall quality and richness and ripeness of the wines. So the cabinets tend to be the driest and the ice wines do tend to be the sweetest. Um, but that's really the, the breakdown. You know, obviously, you know, the winery, the vintage, the varietal, the vineyards are all very important in German wines. But this classification of ripeness, I think, is really the most confusing and most important thing to know about German wines. So, let's kick into wine number one. One, excuse me. Uh, this is the Von Hovel Estate Riesling, and on the back of the label, you'll see the QBA uh, verification. Now, what Rudy Weiss does, the uh, producer, the excuse me, the import of these wines is he calls all his QBA level wines Estate Rieslings, and again, he does that because of so much confusion. So once again, I'm throwing another wrench into it. And again, German wines are very confusing, no doubt about it. But what they are, if nothing else, are very aromatic extracted interesting wines. Now there's obviously other white wines besides Riesling in Germany, whether it's Gewürztraminer or Muller Thurgau. There's other wines, but we're going to specifically talk about Riesling because that's really what most people recognize German wines for and most of the wines that people drink. Um, really nice golden color. Not really golden, but more of like a pale straw color from the uh, Von Hovel. This is an entry level Riesling. It's dry. It's a, definitely a dry wine. Um, it's um, got a little hint of melon. Very crisp, very clean. Very basic though. It's a nice wine. Rudy Weiss, if you ever see the Rudy Weiss label on the back of a German wine, you can be rest assured that he's a tremendous importer and most of his wines are very good. 8.5 alcohol content, so very light wine. Mary, this could be a great wine to start with after the Behringer White Zin. I'm not overly blown away by this wine. It's very solid. It's nothing too crazy, but it's um, it's definitely a, a decent bottle of wine. You know, again, this wine price range is about $10 or so. Um, maybe less, maybe more, but it, it's a nice entry-level wine. Let's move on. <clears throat> 
excuse me, Willie Haig 2004 Riesling Cabinet. Now the single vineyard is the Bromberger Jaffer, but you'll notice the Riesling Cabinet is what you're really looking for. And the QMP designation is right underneath that. I don't know if you're gonna get it, but um, there you'll see, again, the QMP, which I refer to is the Klotschwein Mit Pradikat which is really, once again, wines of distinction, top level German wines. So I would always look for the QMP or the QBA if you're looking for German wines. Again, the Riesling, and it's a cabinet. This is that level, that sixth level of structure uh, that we were talking about. Cabinet is the first level. Um, so, and again, you know, I'm just racing through my mind all the things I know. You know, I'm trying to keep it very basic. I don't want to get into all the different aspects of it. Obviously, there's regions that are very important, whether, it, you know, it's the Moselle or what have you. But uh, we're going to just talk about the structure. We're going to move from a QBA to a Riesling cabinet to a Riesling Spatlace to a Riesling Auschlace. Just move up the ladder. These are most of the wines you'll see on the shelves. Great nose, really spritzy. Got a little bit of an apricot. Willie Hogg is a tremendous producer. Really nice, really great frizzante, very very lively. No, when I say frizzante, it means a little bit of sparkling, but not much at all. This would go great with crab or any kind of seafood. Very clean. Does have a little hint of residual sugar, but you know, I think it's a ninety point wine, fifteen to twenty dollars. Very very nice, well made. Nice wine, very crisp, very clean, well deserving of the ninety point score that that it received. Or 91. Again, I didn't do a lot of homework on, on the wines themselves. Was much more paying attention to give you a different aspect from each wine. So, um, let's move on. This is the Joe Hart. This is the 2003 Riesling Spatlace from Joan Hart, which is a great producer. Now, it's a single vineyard, Peach Porter Gold Trophen, which this is, again, a thing that a lot of people get confused about. But you're always looking for the Spatlace, the Cabinet, the Auschlace. You know, after the Riesling, it always will tell you that, then the producer, and then there are single vineyards, just like any other wine-growing region. Again, this is the next step up the ladder of the ripeness levels, really is what it is. Hmm, very different nose. This is uh, totally different. Nice color, has a little bit more going for it, very golden apple color. The nose is kind of coming across like a mix between cardboard and I got it. Take an apple, slice it in half, and spread it all over paper, and then smell the paper. That's what I'm getting, a little bit of hint of clearly apple, but almost like a paper cardboard. And sometimes when you smell or, or taste paper, that means the wine is corked, but I don't think that's the case here. It's just a, the flavor profile. Almost like a little bit of a burnt wood on the nose as well. Nice mid palate comes together nicely, finishes strong, almost like a, like an Italian ice, almost like an apple Italian ice. It's got that real vibe to it, very fresh, very clean, very good, well made, um, considering, I'll tell you what, I actually prefer the cabinet, so I'm a little bit disappointed with this wine, but it's a solid bottle of wine, an interesting bottle of, of Riesling. Uh, I'm just gonna have to say a pass though. I'm gonna score this an 88 point wine based on the $20 price range it is. And, uh, and that's it, let's move on. St. Urbanshof 2004 Riesling Auschlese, which is uh, the next level up. And this is like the real, real top of the Rieslings before they get too, too sweet. This comes from a single vineyard, Ochner Bachstein, again. You'll see. And so, again, this is a $35, $45 bottle of wine. This uh, tends to have, a, I, and this is really cool. Hope you can see this. This really comes with a lot of frizzante, lots of bubbles, almost champagne-esque. But you'll see that will blow over right away. It's already gone. Um, this wine scored 94 points from the Wine Spectator, so it's got a big, big score. St. Urbanshof is a tremendous producer. And it's got a very interesting nose, almost like a limestone kind of, makes, makes me think of the sea. Almost makes me think of like a shell fresh out of the sea because a little salt water aspect to the nose. Yeah, it makes me think of the Jersey Shore, a little taffy, salt water taffy aspects. Maybe apple. Again, we're getting a lot of apple in these Rieslings. Mm. 
Um, great wine. This is really serious stuff. I, mean, I think it's a little overrated at 94 points, maybe like a 92 or 93. But you can taste the weight. And if you ever get a chance to do what I just did, I would highly recommend it. Try the four different levels, and then if you really want to go for it, go for the truck and you know the Baron Auschleis and the truck and Baron Auschleis, and then finally the ice wine. You'll see the overall weight of the wines is much higher. There's a considerable jump in weight from this wine to the few. These levels, these you know QBA and QMP, and then the levels within QMP, these are not guarantees that the wines are going to be any better than the wines below them, as we saw with the Spotlace and the, and the cabinet. But what they do is they give you a range or a guide. In 1971, the German Council tried to change the laws and created this whole system. They've confused more people than they've helped, but it is out there, and there's obviously a lot of websites and a lot of tools if you want to learn more about it. Most importantly, let's not get too bogged down with wine. I think sometimes people take wine way too serious, life way too serious for that matter, and I think really wine, if nothing else, is meant to be enjoyed and bring so much joy and pleasure to me and, uh, and to many other people around the world. And so I really think you should take advantage of this hobby and, and really take it for what it is, which is an amazing, amazing opportunity to try and taste different flavors from all over the world. Which gets me to the question of the day. A lot of people have commented in the last couple of episodes about the New York Times article that came out on ratings over the weekend. Obviously, I've been preaching this all this time that, you know, they, they actually reached out for me for the article. I, I kind of missed the interview. But the reality is this. Wine is meant to be loved, and your palate is more important than the rating scheme. Don't go by me. Don't go by anybody. I always preach that. And I hope you're developing your own palate and trying different things. So here's my question. I'm just curious to get a real gauge. And I hope everybody answers this because it's really easy. Who's your favorite reviewer and who's the least favorite reviewer you have? Who do you trust the most and who do you trust the least? So let's make it quick and interesting and fun and I hope you enjoyed this serious episode of Wine Library TV.